Hey, welcome to this lesson on nuclear charge and shielding. This is the lesson that is going to explain all of the periodic table trends that we spoke about in the last video. So today's question of the day, what are the primary differences between the Bohr diagrams for fluorine and chlorine? You may have to draw them. The reason I asked you to draw fluorine and chlorine is because they are in the same group on the periodic table and they look something like this. Going down any group of the periodic table, we already know that we are increasing the number of principal energy levels because I'm sure you remember that everything in group one, hydrogen and helium, have one principal energy level of electrons. Everything in period two has two principal energy levels of electrons. Everything in period three has three principal energy levels. So as we go down a group, of course, we are increasing the number of energy levels. And then here, just for example, we have an atom that has two energy levels, and here we have three energy levels, just to show you that, of course, with additional energy levels, our atoms are going to get bigger. All of the trends on the periodic table that are exhibited down a group are caused by shielding. Shielding is where your interior electrons are going to block or shield any attractive force between the electrons and its nucleus. This outer electron, of course, is attracted to the nucleus, but a few reasons it's less attracted is that it's further away. Think of magnets, the further away they are, the less attractive force they feel. And additionally, we have repulsive forces. So the larger your atom and the bigger your atom is, the further away your valence is from the nucleus, which is going to decrease attraction overall. Plus, the more interior electrons you have, the more repulsive forces you have, which is going to diminish attractive forces. So not only are interior electrons going to shield outer electrons from the attraction of the nucleus, but electrons in the same energy level can shield each other from their, um, their attraction to the nucleus. So just more electrons in general is going to increase the number of repulsive forces. So down a group of the periodic table, we can explain all of our periodic table trends using this concept of shielding. When there is decreased attraction between outer or valence electrons and the nucleus, we have all of our periodic table trends. Specifically, the three trends that talk about electrons are ionization energy, electronegativity, and metallic character. Um, metallic character is not really quantified, so we're gonna focus on ionization energy and electronegativity. On this graph, you can see that we have consecutive members of group 18, meaning this is helium, neon, argon, and krypton, and their ionization energies, if you just looked at those together, um, because they're members of the same group, those ionization energies are decreasing, and that is because Helium's valence electrons are very close and very highly attracted to the nucleus, so it's going to take a lot of energy to pull them away. Neon's electrons are a little further away with some repulsive forces, so it's going to be a little bit easier to take away neon's electrons than it would helium's. Going down the group, you can see that we have um, increased distance between the... Um, valence electrons and the nucleus. And as a result, those electrons are less attracted. Plus we have more electrons in general, increasing repulsive forces, making um, the ionization energy drop over time. The same thing is true for electronegativity. Going down a group, electronegativity decreases. Um, I wouldn't necessarily show that for the noble gases because they don't want electrons. They don't want to bond with anybody. But if you were to look at group 17, the same thing would happen. Um, fluorine is going to be the highest because the electron that she is going to get is going to be very, very close to her nucleus. And then chlorines is going to be a little further away and bromine even further and iodine even further than that. So um, the same trend could be exhibited for electronegativity as well. Now, going across a period is where things are a little less intuitive, and that is due to a concept called nuclear charge. Looking across a period, we can look here, we have lithium, beryllium, boron, and carbon. 
just the first few elements of period two. Um, in this case, the number of protons is going to increase, obviously, and um, the number of principal energy levels stays the same. So every single one of these nuclei is going to be surrounded by two energy levels of electrons. When we measure nuclear charge or perhaps count nuclear charge, um, we're just counting the number of protons. So lithium's nuclear charge is plus three, beryllium's nuclear charge is plus four, and so on. This is where chemistry gets a little bit weird. Um, electrons are matter, um, but sometimes they have the behavior of energy. And let's just say for the sake of argument that they are moving just short of the speed of light. Let's just say that. Um, so the nucleus is trying to attract a single electron and try to pull it in. But this electron is moving so quickly that let's just say the nucleus can't grab onto it can't grab onto an individual electron. So instead of trying to grab an individual electron, the nucleus is instead going to be attracted to the entirety of an electron shell. So when we are comparing elements that are in the same period with the same number of principal energy levels, we can just compare the nuclear charge of those atoms to determine kind of where they're gonna be at. So we have sodium here with 11 protons and three energy levels. And then we have chlor uh, chlorine with 17 protons and three energy levels. So chlorine is pulling on, remember, they're just pulling on the individual energy levels, not electrons. So sodium has 11 electrons pulling on three energy levels, and chlorine has 17 protons pulling on the same number of energy levels. So chlorine has like a little bit more strength and is able to pull the electron shells in tighter. Yes. There are more repulsive forces because it has 17 electrons versus the 11 electrons. But I will tell you, this trend is accurate. Although chlorine does have more repulsive forces because there's more electrons, it net has more attractive forces to pull in the radius of this atom much tighter. Any of our trends across a period are going to be dictated by that attraction between all of the protons together, pulling on the electron shells and pulling them in. Highlighted in green, we have group one metals. And highlighted in pink, we have noble gases. So looking at either of these um, highlighted things, you are looking at a group on the periodic table, but going from the group one metal to the noble gas, like between the green and the pink, between the green and the pink, between the green and the pink, you would be looking at a period on the periodic table. From here to here, we are looking at lithium through neon, and then we're looking at sodium through argon, and then we are looking at potassium through krypton. And in this case, each of them has the exact same trend. Uh, the radius is shrinking as you go across because we have more protons pulling on that outer energy level and pulling it in tighter and tighter and tighter with each additional proton. Now, because the nuclear charge is pulling in these electrons very, very close, you would understand that the ionization energy is going to increase as well. When the electrons are closer to the nucleus, they have a tighter attractive force. It's going to be harder to pull them away. Secondly, your electronegativity is going to increase because not only are you um, converting going across a period from metals to nonmetals, but you also have um, your electrons coming in closer and closer and closer. So in the case of, let's say, chlorine right here, chlorine's new valence electron is going to be very, very close to its nucleus compared to the new valence electron in, let's say, phosphorus. Phosphorus's electron, new electrons, are going to be not as close to the nucleus because chlorine is able to pull in that shell tighter. So using the concepts of nuclear charge and shielding, you should be able to compare any two elements in terms of a periodic table trend and like thoroughly explain it, not just know that one's bigger than the other. Um, so in this case, we have the question, why is chlorine's radius smaller than sulfur's? They are in the same period and therefore they have the same number of electron energy levels. They are both working with three energy levels because they are both members of the third period, but chlorine has a higher nuclear charge than sulfur, so it can pull the electrons in more tightly, making chlorine have a smaller radius. 
Also, because these electrons are pulled in tighter, chlorine is going to have a higher electronegativity and a higher ionization energy. This is a question about elements in the same group comparing barium and strontium in terms of their ionization energy. I will let you read this explanation, but I can tell you that down a group, the explanation will always be shielding. So between the last video on what the periodic table trends are, and then in this lesson, nuclear charge and shielding explaining the periodic table trends, you should at this point be able to take really any two elements on the periodic table and make some pretty good comparisons between them. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video, subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye.